Hi friends, it's Cody here, and today we're going to learn how to make a realistic 3D digital version of yourself in under an hour with absolutely no 3D modeling experience necessary. Yep. So I've split these videos up into four parts. Part one is going to go over the process of creating a digital character in Autodesk's free online character generator. It's pretty rad. Part two gets a little more advanced by replacing the character's skin with a photo texture of your own face in Photoshop. Frankenstein! Part three is going to go over how to import your 3D model into Unity and convert it into a character for video games. And for extra credit, part four will go over how to convert a low polygon version of that model into a papercraft mask of your face. So let's get started. Hi friends, Cody here, and today we're going to learn how to make a digital version of you. So cool! We're going to be using Autodesk's free cool new software called Character Generator. It's at charactergenerator.autodesk.com. And if you don't have an Autodesk account, it'll ask you to sign in before you get to the website. Uh, but once you do, it'll lead to here. So also, um, after we're done, you can choose to just download your standard model, or if you want to further uh, customize it. I'll show you how. What you'll need are some pictures of yourself uh, from the front, from the side, and some hair. So I'll show you what we're going to do with that in just a moment. But for now, let's go ahead and jump back into Autodesk Character Generator. If you are logged into this much, you'll see this screen. So go ahead and hit New, and we'll start from the very basics. So what you see here are a bunch of female pre-generated characters and a bunch of male pre-generated characters. You can start from the very basics at the default, or you can pick on a pre-programmed character um, and then customize from there. Uh, if you see in the top right a symbol, that usually means that that characteristic is not free. So if I wanted to make an alien type character, it says you would allow to design it, but you have to buy it to download it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just click the default and go from there. So I'm going to click on default mail and I'm going to make a digital version of myself. So hit customize and what it's going to show you is a preview here, all the characteristics here and all the face choices here. And I'm going to go ahead and move the screen so that I can see my preview of my own face and use it as a guide. Um, everyone has kind of a a way that they think they look and how they actually look so I want to make sure that I'm, I'm true to form. So the way that this works is you choose two different faces and average those two faces out by dragging and dropping the two faces in and using the slider to average the two faces. So as you can see here the preview the, the total face model is going to be going between these. So let's see, I have a, a kind of a narrow face that comes down to a point and kind of a big forehead. So let's look for a character that looks like that. Um, I think maybe between here and, wow, a lot of different choices. Be like this one. It looks kind of devilish. It's pretty funny. So um, you can go in and change all the different characteristics. And I'm just going to try to get the face a little bit more narrow. And this guy has a much bigger jaw than I have. So if I want to change just a single aspect, I can click on something else. And I'm going to pick someone with a smaller jaw, definitely not this guy. Well, that's already the one I have. And I'll slide it back this way. And as you can see, it changes the, the proportions of the jaw. So I'm going to go ahead and um, work on my face for just a second, and I'll come back when I'm all done.
Okay, I've been working for a little while and I've made a lot of different uh, kind of surprising choices with with my face to try to get it close as possible to these original pictures. And if you look on the preview, you can kind of navigate your face around and, and get a better view. You can look straight on and you can kind of turn it to the side. I uh, Unfortunately, most of the characters uh, have a pretty like almost Neanderthalish width to their face, so I wasn't able to get uh, the thinness to my own face, um, but I, I tried really hard. Um, so you can see from the profile as well, it's uh, similar. Uh, you won't be able to get it perfect, but just do your best. And um, so I, m I made some funny choices. Uh, with the chin, all the guys' chins were massive, so I switched over right here. You can tab between male and female. And uh, don't be afraid to kind of look for personal characteristics all across the board. So my chin is definitely not like a these big giant chins, so I, I chose between two girls and actually came out pretty close to what my nose is actually like. Um, for my cheeks, I <laughs> I chose uh, Mr. Boney, which is, um, I don't know, pretty funny. Uh, it's not quite so pronounced, but um, pretty close to, uh, it gives it a little bit thinner look. And uh, I, I, I put my nose kind of big out. So kind of close, not perfect, whatever, we'll get there. Next up is choosing your skin tone. So you can click here, and again, you can pick between male and female. With this, it's uh, pretty similar, so it doesn't matter too much. Uh, I have a, a bit of a lighter complexion, so just scroll through and, and try to find something pretty close to it. You can also get uh, start to get your um, kind of stubble going on, uh, or if you want, bone kind of structure. Um, so that's pretty close, and if you keep staying tuned, we'll actually completely replace this, so it doesn't really matter anyway. Um, I'm just picking through and trying to find something that looks like an old man. That's kind of funny. That's as close as possible to my own nat uh, natural skin coat tone. Uh, I, th I think that's about as close as possible. Next up is eye color. And I have kind of light blue eyes, so let me see. Maybe like this. Mm, too blue. I look like a, a zombie from Walking Dead. Uh, all right, I'll go with that one. Next up is hair. And I've got my hair pulled back in this one. Uh, normally it's a, a big hot mess. And again, there's not the greatest choices for hair. Um, but if you stay tuned, we'll, we'll work on that a little bit. I might switch over again to the female side. And uh, my hair's a little bit longer. And none of those are really close. That's kind of there. <laughs> looks terrible. Um, like I said, not perfect, but pretty close. All right, I'm going to switch on over now to the body type. And just like the face, you choose a bunch of different characteristics and navigate between arms to uh, chest, etc. So again, I'm going to go ahead and design my character close to me, and I'll be right back. All right, I've gone ahead and finished up with the body. Um, I found it pretty close between the uh, the top two here with Victor and Gabriel. I'm pretty thin. Uh, I did have to thin down the arms and the legs a little bit by um, picking again female because all the guys are made out of uh, Neanderthal proportions. <laughs> so uh, let's go on to clothing. And this is my probably main complaint with the character generator. Uh, all the guys have like suits and military equipment and doctor stuff. And the girls, uh, they, it's essentially like 
bikinis and lace stuff and uh, uh, street walking clothes. It's it's pretty sexist. It's pretty. Uh, I'll show you how ridiculous it is if I put some of these on myself. Uh, I mean, look at this. Like seriously, and it's just it's it's bad. All my female colleagues say. Uh, there's just nothing cute. <laughs> it's all pretty bad. I don't know if this game, uh, if this software was designed by 14-year-old teenagers, but um, it's pretty ridiculous. Anyways, uh, I guess I'll just pick something standard like a t-shirt and jeans. Um, so you can pick between tops, bottoms, and shoes. And uh, not the best texturing, but we're going to go into Photoshop in just a second and layer these up to something different. Maybe some slacks. Alright, there we go. Close enough. Alright, I'm going to go into the shoes. And I wish they had some PF flyers. That'd be really slick. Regular tennis shoes, I guess. Okay, groovy. Good enough. So when you're all done, um, go ahead and click in the bottom right, finish, and name your character Cody. Okay. And it's going to create that character. So the next step is to generate the created character from your character designs. So I'll look here, Cody, and hit this arrow and generate the character. So this is how you can you can format how you want to download it. Um, I'm going to do a video in just a bit on how to bring the character into Unity and make it to a character generated controlling controlled character. Uh, but for this purpose we're going to be working in Maya to make it even more like us. So I'm going to download an MB file and again uh, the medium and high are educators are paid for so if you want to not have to pay for it you could just hit low and I'm actually going to download a low version as well um, because I'm going to be showing you how to turn your face into a paper graft in the third video so I want the clothes I'll go ahead and download these maps as well for the unity file that we're going to be working in and uh, I'm going to get the bone rig as well for Unity. Um, so I'll go ahead and hit generate. And it says it's going to create a few, one in just a few minutes. And you go into generated characters. And in just a moment, it'll pop up here. So we'll start off when that happens. Art Lab Plus is a free digital drop-in studio for teenagers in Washington, D.C., located in the Sculpture Garden of the Hirshhorn Museum. Come, learn how to make games, learn how to do anything you're interested in. It's totally rad. We'll see you there. Bye. But, uh,